All right, let's talk about Tucker Carlson interviewing Vladi Poo. We're in Moscow tonight. We're here to interview the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin. We'll be doing that soon. There are risks to conducting an interview like this, obviously. So we've thought about it carefully over many months. Here's why we're doing it. First, because it's our job. We're in journalism. Our duty is to inform people. Two years into a war that's reshaping the entire world, most Americans are not informed. They have no real idea what's happening in this region, here in Russia or 600 miles away in Ukraine. But they should know. They're paying for much of it in ways they might not fully yet perceive. The war in Ukraine is a human disaster. It's left hundreds of thousands of people dead, an entire generation of young Ukrainians, and it's depopulated the largest country in Europe. But the long-term effects are even more profound. This war has utterly reshaped the global military and trade alliances. And Well, you get crap for interviewing a Houthi teenager. I mean, the people that uh, say that will also compare it to this, most likely, and make it seem like some random fucking Houthi teenager is the same as, like, Vladimir Putin. Um, but it doesn't really matter. Apparently, Lex Friedman is also taking flack. Yeah, because he said that it's good that Tucker is interviewing Vladimir Putin. So here's my position on this, okay? One, Tucker Carlson is not a real journalist. He's never been a real journalist. He's a charlatan. He's a hack. He's a propagandist in the, in the uh, you know, uh, in the misinforming uh, variety. Okay. Do I believe that you shouldn't interview Vladimir Putin? Of course you should. There is definitely a purpose to interviewing Vladimir Putin. The problem is you're not going to get any actual real conversations out of Vladimir Putin. That is just the fucking, uh, you know, absolute truth. Okay. That's it. And it's certainly not going to be Tucker Carlson doing real journalism. One of the things in this situation is that like, there are, there are literally like real journalists showing the Russian perspective on the war, except those journalists are in jail. Vladimir Putin put them in jail. So like, I'm sorry, but that's a little crazy when you got American journalists in jail. That's insane. That's insane, brother. Like, I'm not the, oh, Vladi Poo is Hitler. What is happening? It's Putler, all this shit. Like, I'm not one of those people at all. I do believe that uh, you can interview anyone and everyone. I would love to interview Donald Trump, for example. Okay? But overall, I think... What? Sorry, bud. Hard to disagree with you. <laughs> This person just keeps saying the sanctions. If you're if you're trying to do an ad break debate, um, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I already ran it. So, yeah. See, I already ran it. I already ran it. You missed it. Yeah, you missed it, bud. Sorry, bud. I ran it already. Didn't American just die in Ukraine jail? Yeah, uh, Gonzalo Lira or whatever. He's like some fucking weirdo red pill guy. Who, who, by the way, did not deserve to be uh, uh, killed in a Ukrainian prison either, for the record, just because he was like a fucking asshole. I did see a lot of people put that position out there. Um, but yeah, or not killed, he died, sorry. I, I don't know how he died, but... What? Would you say that on the record? What do you mean? Yeah, he was a weird fascist, but like it's kind of crazy that you know someone kind of crazy that he he died in Ukrainian prison. Anyway, um, he was denied medical attention and tortured. He was an unvaccinated chain smoker who died of pneumonia. The d Russian narrative is that Ukraine killed him. <laughs> anyway, I look. Um, what was I saying? I was talking about Tucker Carlson. My controversial opinion on this is that, um, no one is above like, uh, being, I guess, uh, asked questions and actually, uh, uh, participating in that, in that kind of conversation, even including Nazis. It's just that when you do interview people like that, you have to actually interview them. Okay. 
you actually actually have to be uh and and depending on the platform depending on who it is depending on the impact like if you're bringing up a fucking random nazi that's a little bit different right if you're if you're taking if you're like hyping up richard spencer on new york times well you fucked up if you're hyping up nicholas fuentes then you're technically platforming them you can't platform vladimir putin he is the platform okay so Tucker Carlson is doing this for that reason. He wants to do it because he, he wants clout. Maybe he wants to make some money off of uh, Vladi Pooty Poo and defend Vladi Pooty Poo a little bit, right? Because uh, there's like this weird Telegram-backed uh, uh, movement in the in the right-wing circles that actually likes Vladimir Putin because he's like transphobic and shit, okay? Anyway, regardless... The point is... It's understandable to interview Vladimir Putin. It's just, I don't think he's going to do a good job at it. That's it. You know what I mean? You are talking gibberish. I think it's ridiculous to not interview someone like Vladimir Putin. He's not a random person. He is literally the, the authoritarian leader of Russia for decades. Okay. It's fucking ridiculous. He's a world leader. I would say the same thing as like interviewing Assad. Okay. I would say the same thing as interviewing every single person that has a role in any kind of global conflict. Okay. The only difference is the only difference is Tucker Carlson is not going to be serious about it. He's just going to want to cut propaganda. Yeah, this is also the interesting element here. Surely a guy whose father was head of Voice of America and tried to join the CIA will do an honest interview with a dictator who was handpicked by Clinton, Tony Blair, Yeltsin, and the CIA director at the time. A lot of people forget that Putin was our guy. You know what I mean? Like, he was definitely aligned with the anti-Soviet uh, uh, regime haters who wanted to liberalize the marketplaces. That's why he was a part of that group of individuals that ended up seizing power in Russia, what is known as Russia after the dissolution of the USSR. So like the notion that the notion that these, uh, these guys just, uh, you know, someone like Pooty Poo is, is a fucking Soviet spy or something is so stupid. The only thing that, the only thing that a lot of like uh pro capitalist Russians care about as far as like the USSR is like, uh, the, the mythology of being a superpower that is, uh, able to fight against the United States of America. That's the only thing they care about. Anyway, but like I said, uh, I find it really interesting. The, the CIA component I find very interesting with respect to Tucker Carlson. But I do personally think he's just like doing this because he wants clout. And he knows that, uh, you know, there's somewhat of a constituency on the... There's uh, somewhat of a constituency that is like pro-Russia, albeit marginal. On the uh, on the the Republican side, due to like a shitload of steady Russian messaging on those Telegram channels, um, but yeah, I think he's just doing it because he's fallen off, though. Isn't his interview good for bringing back attention to hopefully material support to helping Ukraine in their fight against our foreign adversaries, though? Wait, what? Tucker Carlson is going to literally talk about how we shouldn't fund Ukraine and how Russia is doing a thing that is, like, righteous and wants to defend itself. He's going to say a whole bunch of shit that sounds a lot like me, and a lot of dumbasses are going to listen to it and then uh, get duped by it, okay? And think following. that he's, like... Uh, He's criticizing Russia at all when he's actually defending Russia. Have as well. And in total, they have upended the world economy. The post-World War II economic order, the system that guaranteed prosperity in the West for more than 80 years, is coming apart very fast. And along with it, the dominance of the U.S. dollar. These are not small changes. They are history-altering developments. They will define the lives of our grandchildren. Most of the world understands this perfectly well. They can see it. Ask anyone in Asia or the Middle East, what the future looks like. And yet the populations of the English-speaking countries seem mostly unaware. They think that as nothing has really changed. And they think that because no one has told them the truth. 
Their media outlets are corrupt. They lie to their readers and viewers. And they do that mostly by omission. For example, since the day the war in Ukraine began, American media outlets have spoken to scores of people from Ukraine, and they have done scores of interviews with Ukrainian President Zelensky. We ourselves have put in a request for an interview with Zelensky, and we hope he accepts. But the interviews he's already done in the United States are not traditional interviews. They are fawning pep sessions, specifically designed to amplify Zelensky's demand that the U.S. enter more deeply into a war in Eastern Europe and pay for it. That is not journalism. It is government propaganda, propaganda of the ugliest kind, the kind that kills people. At the same time, our politicians and media outlets have been doing this, promoting a foreign leader like he's a new consumer brand. Not a single Western journalist has bothered to interview the president of the other country involved in this conflict, Vladimir Putin. Most Americans have no idea why Putin invaded Ukraine or what his goals are now. They've never heard his voice. That's wrong. Americans have a right to know all they can about a war they're implicated in. And we have the right to tell them about it because we are Americans too. Freedom of speech is our birthright. We were born with the right to say what we believe. That right cannot be taken away no matter who is in the White House. But they're trying anyway. Almost three years ago, the Biden administration illegally spied on our text messages and then leaked the contents to their servants in the news media. They did this in order to stop a Putin interview that we were planning. Last month, we're pretty certain they did exactly the same thing once again. But this time, we came to Moscow anyway. We are not here because we love Vladimir Putin. We are here because we love the United States. And we want it to remain... I love Tucker Carlson being like, Zelensky got a lot of puff piece interviews, which is why we're going to give one to Vladimir Putin. It's like, dude, what are you... <laughs> like? <laughs> He's like, nobody cares about the Russian side of the war. Well, nobody cares and nobody has any idea because the ones who do report on the Russian side of the war are oftentimes found dead, falling out of apartment complexes or found themselves arrested, which is true, by the way. That's the whole point. Okay. He says with a gun pointed to his head off screen. Fuck no, no. Tucker does not have a gun pointed to him uh, on the side of the screen. The gun is a, is a money gun, okay? It's a money cannon. It's a clout gun and a money cannon, okay? Like, once again, I repeat, there is no reason not to interview Vladimir Putin, okay? There's no reason not to interview him. It makes perfect sense to do that. He is a global leader. You're not platforming him, okay? It's just that you also have to be honest when you are interviewing someone like Vladimir Putin. And I don't think Tucker is going to do that. That's it. <laughs> we're not here because we love Vladimir Putin. We do, but that's not why we're here. <laughs> that's funny. Uh. And prosperous and free. We paid for this trip ourselves. We took no money from any government or group, nor are we charging people to see the interview. It is not behind a paywall. Anyone can watch the entire thing shot live to tape and unedited on our website, tuckercarlson.com. Elon Musk, to his great credit, has promised not to suppress or block this interview once we post it on his platform, X, and we're grateful for that. Western governments, by contrast, will certainly do their best to censor this video. Dude, come on, come on. I, I do hope. Oh, my God. I'm wishing for, like, all the libtards who are so freaked out about Russian interference to, like, demand the arrest of Tucker Carlson. Please, 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 please. At least one dub. At least one dub. One dub. Please, please. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It would. I would turn around. I would be the biggest fucking blue anon dick rider. You have no idea. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it, dude. It would be so sick. Can you imagine? Imagine, like, oh. Oh, my God. Landslide victory. Fucking arresting, arresting Tucker Carlson for treason. <laughs> oh. Oh, it'd be so sick. It would be totally a violation of my principles as far as like journalism and how it should be protected. And um, 
uh, and all that stuff. And, and yes, uh, deep down inside, I do think that that would be not great, but it would be kind of cool if it happened. I would look the other way just for once. You know what I mean? Parker is going to get sent to a Mordovia penal colony for having some Nelk Brothers Zin, Nelk Brothers Zin in his luggage. <laughs> this Zin is too powerful. <laughs> Sukobliat is not legal Zin. What is the Zin? <laughs> you go. Salt mines for you. Label him a foreign agent and make him testify to Congress. Imagine who the right wing would want to trade with Russia to get Tucker out of prison. Biden will do that just like he sent the feds down to own Greg Abbott. Oh, yeah. Dude, many opportunities for Biden to kind of come across like actually dark Brandon here. And he's just flubbing all of them. No fucking movement on, on the federales coming in and, and taking over Texas. No activation of the National Guard even at, at the behest of the federal government. on other less principled platforms because that's what they do. They are afraid of information they can't control. But you have no reason to be afraid of it. We are not encouraging you to agree with what Putin may say in this interview, but we are urging you to watch it. You should know as much as you can. And then, like a free citizen and not a slave, you can decide for yourself. Please interview this guy as well when you're in Russia. That's so funny that this guy thinks that Tucker Carlson uh, does not think Edward Snowden is a, is a fucking person that deserves to be executed. Tucker Carlson would pull a fucking uranium dart move on Edward Snowden if given the opportunity. His dad is literally the fucking CIA, okay? Tucker Carlson himself wanted to join the CIA. Get the fuck out of here. He sounds so reasonable. Shut up, hegemonic world place. Or world peace. It was known as a right-wing pro-Russia hack now. It does not matter what Edward Snowden says now. Okay? I don't care. Edward Snowden, in my mind and in my heart, will always be an American hero. It is a damn shame that he had to fucking run, tuck tail and run to Russia to escape the American criminal justice system and military tribunals. Fucking ridiculous. Your chat dumb as hell. No wonder you have to over-explain everything. Yes. Yes, he did a very brave and very patriotic thing. Snowden is a weird libertarian guy and likes Tucker Carlson. Um, I don't know how much he likes Tucker Carlson. Like I said, I don't care. Russia was like the seventh country and the only one that accepted him, Hong Kong, was too scared of Daddy USA. I'm interested to watch this Putin interview, not gonna lie. It'll probably be a shit puff piece, though. Of course it will be. Of course it will be. That's such a backward statement. In the common mind, someone flees Russia to the U.S.? Wait, what? What do you mean? I don't care what the fucking... Wait, in the common mind, someone flees Russia to the U.S. is... Yeah, I, I, I'm I, telling you. Edward Snowden had to run away from the United States of America for being a whistleblower and, and, and exposing the NSA's fundamentally broken uh, FISA court process and how... America spies on all of its fucking allies. Okay? And no, there's a difference between Tara Reid and Edward Snowden. Come on, guys. What the fuck? Please. Tara Reid didn't have to go to Russia. She chose to go to Russia. Edward Snowden had to go to Russia 
for actually uh, being a whistleblower. Not the actress. No, is Tara Reed? No, not the actress. The the lady. I'm thinking of the other lady. The lady that was like uh, Joe Biden raped me. What was her name? Who was like, who was insane, by the way. Straight up. Wasn't Snowden a naturalized citizen of Russia prior to being a whistleblower? No. Anyway, explicitly, deliberately unconstitutional FISA courts that self-admittedly have not been fixed. No reforms are instituted, and they kept spying without congressional mandate since Patriot lapsed in 2020. Will you watch the interview? I mean, I don't know when it's going to be out, but yeah, I would watch the interview. Going bald? Here's what you do. Our advice series, Ask Tucker, is back. I think that Tucker Carlson's impact has softened so much after being on Twitter exclusively. He went from he went from um being the guy who like threatened the the Republican majority uh whip or the speaker of the fucking house or whatever the fuck to literally talking to the guy who uh, supposedly sucked off Barack Obama, okay? And he, and he completely lost all of his relevance. And this is a desperate attempt to win it back, to claw it back, because he knows, just like everyone else does, I guess, or at least just like I do, that the only time you can get legitimate movement on the things that you're doing is if mainstream media is at least offering, like, round-the-clock coverage on it. Okay? And he knows that interviewing Vladimir Putin will get you that coverage. My goat is washed. Yeah. Kind of embarrassing for Putin to be interviewed by the same guy who interviewed the Duluth Dyson. Excuse me. The reason why Putin probably took on the interview is because he saw the brave journalism that Tucker Carlson was willing to do with the Duluth Dyson about how he did crystal meth and sucked off Barack Obama. Do you think it'll make international news? I think it depends on how the media covers it. I think the impact of an interview such as this one would be greatly softened. Okay. It would be, it would be completely, it would be just like irrelevant for the most part. If the media didn't cover it, if they do cover it, then it, it definitely will have more, um, you know, more of an impact. More people will be like, pay attention to it. They'll go crazy over it. It's a Twitter interview. Otherwise nobody gives a shit. But yeah. All right, let's see if we got some fun shit to watch. Does anyone have something good to watch? For me, that's not like immediately political in nature. Oh, this is the two things I was going to talk about. Oh yeah, Elon Musk uh, is going to pay for Gina Carano suing 